after a year-long delay stemming from the COVID-19 effect, the vitamin shop finally opened up itself to a refranchising process. If you've consumed any of my recent content on the vitamin shop, you know that this announcement has been a long time coming. Now that they have publicly disclosed information and interested parties can apply to become a franchisee, I wanted to kind of give you guys an overview of those details, also compare them to GNC franchise, vitamin shop's largest competitor, make you understand why this refranchising process is happening now, and most importantly, what could be coming next at the vitamin shop. Now, for those that aren't too familiar with the vitamin shop, I wanted to share some basic details. Jeffrey Horowitz founded the vitamin shop in 1977. The vitamin shop is an omni-channel specialty supplement retailer. They have about 720 locations currently, and they are all still 100% company owned. They stock about 14,000 SKUs from about 700 brands, including several private label brands. The current CEO is Sharon Lighty, and she's been leading the business since quarter three of 2018. The vitamin shop was acquired by Liberty Tax, which is now known as the franchise group in quarter four of 2019. In 2020, their full year revenue was just over $1 billion, which was flat from a growth rate year over year. 2020 was also a profitable operating year. So why is the vitamin shop now going through this refranchising process? Either they are transitioning to a pure play or some type of hybrid franchise model. Now, as many of my followers know, I've said that the vitamin shop would move to some type of franchise model since the acquisition was announced in August of 2019. The franchise disclosure documents really should have been available in 2020, but because of the COVID-19 effect, a lot of the uncertainty that was happening in the business environment, the vitamin shop decided to put that off, delay that, really kind of dig in and focus on strengthening their business, which though disappointing probably for people that were interested in becoming a franchisee, the business was better off really executing some of their game plans and not rocking the boat too much. With better clarity in the market now in early Q1 of 2021, the refranchising process can now resume. For those unfamiliar with the term, refranchising is a process when a brand starts franchising its own company-owned unit for the goal of boosting income. Franchise Group does not want to be a longtime operator of retail locations that sell vitamins, minerals, and supplements products. They prefer to be an owner of franchise and franchisable businesses where they can build the systems, best practices, and mechanisms that go into a synergistic platform built on scale and leveraging shared services to generate strong cash flows for its shareholders. The ultimate goal is for the franchise group's total store portfolio to be 90% franchised. While this doesn't mean that the vitamin shop will necessarily be 90% franchised, it could be more than that, it could be less than that, it's safe to say that they will look to refranchise as many as possible depending on the interest in the market. Why somebody would want to own a vitamin shop location is that they've been a proven leader in the $50 billion plus vitamins, minerals, and supplements industry, which has experienced steady growth for decades, including 2020 with global health concerns driving increased commitment to wellness. With over 40 years of experience, this franchise opportunity is backed by a proven operating model. On average, the top 25% of the vitamin shop stores generate about $1.7 million in annual revenue and $300,000 net income per store. If you are looking to apply to become a franchise owner of a vitamin shop location, what would you need financially? Now you have to have a cash investment or a liquidity metric of about $200,000. Your net worth should be around $750,000. 
you do have to pay a franchise fee of $40,000 total investment, depending on location and probably a number of other kind of variables could range from $354,000 to $955,000. There is an advertising fee, which is 2% or $1,000 a month. And there's also likely a number of other costs that are associated with this that would be included in the franchise disclosure documents, which are not available publicly at this time. For reference, GNC has the following financial requirements. Their cash investment or liquidity metric is between $130,000 up to $1 million. Their net worth is $330,000 to $1 million. Franchise fee is the same at $40,000. The total investment is $149,800 to $388,600. This likely is much lower than the vitamin shop because there is smaller inventory startup costs and the retail footprint of GNC locations are much smaller than the vitamin shop. And GNC has an advertising fee of 3%. Now what's the process to become a franchise owner of a vitamin shop location? You should first initially contact the vitamin shop or the franchise group, complete the application. If you're approved for that process, you would attend a discovery day based on continued interest. You would review and then sign the franchise disclosure documents and then get approval from the review committee. Now again, for reference, GNC's process is actually pretty similar. You would initially contact GNC, complete the application, visit GNC's headquarters, review and sign the franchise disclosure documents, get approval from a review committee, select your market and location, and be included in a training process. Now, while the vitamin shop doesn't disclose some of that training and how they're gonna help interested franchisees look at current vitamin shop locations or maybe seek out additional ones. I would assume those things are included somehow within the franchising process. On the most fundamental levels, as you can see, the vitamin shop and GNC franchisee requirements and just the process in which would be approved, the differentiation really comes down to what does your franchise dollars ultimately get you. Now, both of these retailers have distribution centers. Both offer a store level omni-channel retailing model. They have buy online, pick up in store. They have on-demand delivery partnerships. They also have hyper-local fulfillment capabilities. But I would argue that the Vitamin Shop has been quicker and more aggressive in innovating in this area compared to GNC. On the other hand, GNC offers a stronger private label portfolio, also a larger breadth of products, but the vitamin shop has been making large leaps in that area. GNC has also been franchising much longer than the vitamin shop, obviously, but because the vitamin shop is owned by a franchise group, which are seasoned veterans within the franchise retailing industry, they're gonna be able to ramp up things very quickly. I believe that GNC has a much stronger global brand, but the vitamin shop has made that one of their biggest objectives and have made a ton of progress in that area. The vitamin shop does have corporate wide year over year growth within their brick and mortar business. GNC did not. I believe that the vitamin shop has their house in order a lot better. Also, I think that their leadership is much stronger, agile, and has a better understanding of the changing retail landscape. From a merchandising perspective, GNC is better known for sports supplements and weight management products, while the vitamin shop, because of their assortment, is better known for general vitamins, minerals, and supplements, and then holistic wellness products. Additionally, the COVID-19 effect showed that people's passions for all things health and wellness has sustained its strength and became more relevant. So this is a great foundation that makes owning a location of the vitamin shop very attractive for prospective franchisees. So what's potentially next for the vitamin shop? The vitamin shop ended 2020 in a relatively strong position compared to what the performance indicators were showing from March to June of 2020. This will help them immensely in attracting high quality franchisees as winners want to be around other winners. I'd expect the vitamin shop leadership to continue focusing on these larger initiatives 
like providing customers with the most trusted products, guidance, and service to help them become their best self, build stronger global brand equity, and increase breadth and quality of the private label assortment. It's truly unknown what the refranchising strategy will do to the vitamin shops culture, but being doom and gloom and just being negative on this change just because change is happening and you don't like it is really the wrong way to look at things. If 2020 taught us anything, the franchise group and the segment level leadership at the vitamin shop were able to execute even in the deepest depths of the uncertain complex business environment that COVID-19 brought on, which I believe this confidence will be leveraged along the way as they transition to a franchise model and be a driver of long-term growth. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna help support me, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button on this video. If this is the first time you've been introduced to my videos, would love for you guys to be a part of my community by subscribing to my channel. I upload several videos just like this weekly. And if you guys wanna connect further outside of this platform, I do include all of my social media links down below. I just wanna thank you guys again for your time. Hopefully I gave you some value in return and we'll see you guys on the next video.